are various ways of delivering oxygen to a child. Methods using funnels or holding oxygen tubing near the face of the child do not result in adequate oxygen concentration in the airways and waste oxygen. They are not recommended. Young children will usually not keep a mask over their face. High flows of at least 4 litres per minute are required to give 40 to 50% oxygen concentrations with a face mask. If the flow of gas into a closely fitting face mask is too low, there may also be a danger of carbon dioxide poisoning. This video will show you three low flow methods of giving oxygen to children. The safest and preferred method in small hospitals in developing countries is using nasal prongs. A length of non-crushed tubing with two hollow prongs placed just inside the child's nostrils. A nasal catheter can be used if prongs are not available. An oxygen tube with a series of exit holes at one end is placed in the child's nose. This method is equally safe. With the third method, using a nasopharyngeal catheter, the oxygen tube is placed in the child's throat. A nasopharyngeal catheter delivers higher concentrations of oxygen in the airways at lower flow rates. It should therefore be reserved for children who cannot be oxygenated with the other two methods, or to hospitals with a very limited supply of oxygen. The use of the nasopharyngeal catheter is also associated with a higher risk of rare but severe complications. It should only be used when staff can be trained and supervised in the correct procedures and are available to closely monitor oxygen therapy. The safest and preferred method of oxygen delivery is by using nasal prongs. Nasal prongs are a piece of tubing with two hollow prongs at one end. Oxygen is fed along the tubing and comes out of the holes in the prongs. Nasal prongs are more comfortable than a face mask and are useful with restless children. Nasal prongs are placed here at the entrance to the child's nostrils. Anna is aged five months and has been brought to the hospital because she has not been able to breastfeed because of breathlessness. Anna requires oxygen therapy. Gently suck out the child's nose and pharynx so that all mucus is removed. It's important to keep the child's nose clean and free of mucus. If it is full of mucus, oxygen cannot reach the lungs. If necessary, put two or three drops of a salt water solution onto a saline wick of soft cloth and use it to clean the child's nostrils. The nasal prongs should lie just inside the child's nostrils. The tubing should be run from under the child's nostrils along the side of the child's head and then be taped under the back of the child's shirt so that the child cannot reach it. Then adjust the oxygen flow rate. If the child is less than two months old, he should receive half a litre to one litre of oxygen per minute through the nasal prongs. If the child is aged two months up to five years, give one to two litres of oxygen per minute through the prongs. These flow rates should deliver 30 to 35% of oxygen in the airways, providing the child's nose is not blocked and the child is not breathing through his or her mouth. Anna is aged five months, therefore she should receive oxygen at one to two litres per minute. To give oxygen by nasal catheter, an eight French gauge oxygen catheter is used. Use a smaller six French gauge catheter only if an eight French gauge one is not available. This catheter has a number of exit holes. 
a nasal catheter is inserted in one nostril. The catheter should be pushed straight backwards along the floor of the nose and should be positioned here. The catheter should not be angled up towards the top of the head so that it hits the roof of the nose. Ahmed is aged four years. He's been brought to the hospital because he's not able to breastfeed because of breathlessness. Therefore, Ahmed requires oxygen therapy. First, gently suck out the child's nose and pharynx so that all mucus is removed. The catheter should be put in place before the oxygen supply is turned on. Take an 8-FG catheter. To be in the right place, the catheter should be pushed into the nostril for a distance that's equal to the distance from the side of the nostril to the inner margin of the eyebrow. If you mark this distance on the tubing with a marker or tape, you'll be able to check that the tubing has been pushed the correct distance into the nostril. You'll also be able to check whether the catheter is still in the right place by simple observation. After the tubing has been placed in the nostril, it should be taped along the child's face. Run the tubing over the shoulder and tape it down the child's back so that it's safely out of the child's reach. The flow rate should then be adjusted. If the child is less than two months old, he should receive half a liter of oxygen per minute through the nasal catheter. If the child is aged two months up to five years, he should receive one liter of oxygen per minute through the nasal catheter. Higher flow rates should not be used as they may be dangerous to the child. These recommended flow rates should deliver 35 to 40 percent of oxygen in the airways. To give oxygen by nasopharyngeal catheter, an 8 French gauge oxygen catheter is used. Use a smaller 6 French gauge catheter only if an 8 French gauge one is not available. A nasopharyngeal catheter is inserted in one nostril. The catheter should be pushed straight backwards along the floor of the nose and should be positioned here. The catheter should not be angled up towards the top of the head so that it hits the roof of the nose. If the catheter is not positioned correctly and is pushed into the esophagus or gullet as shown here, it will fill the stomach with oxygen. This is a serious complication which is potentially fatal. Tamsin is aged seven weeks. She has been brought to the hospital because she's not able to breastfeed because of breathlessness. Therefore, Tamsin requires oxygen therapy. First, gently suck out the child's nose and pharynx so that all mucus is removed. The catheter should be put in place before the oxygen supply is turned on. Take an 8-FG catheter. To be in the right place, the catheter should be pushed into the nostril to a depth equal to the distance from the side of the nose to the front of the ear. If you mark this distance on the tubing with a marker or tape, you'll be able to check that the tubing has been pushed the correct distance into the nostril. You'll also be able to check whether the catheter is still in the right place by simple observation. After the tubing has been placed in the nostril, it should be taped along the child's face. Run the tubing over the shoulder and tape it down the child's back so that it's safely out of the child's reach. The flow rate should then be adjusted. If the child is less than two months old, he should receive half a litre of oxygen per minute through the nasopharyngeal catheter. If the child is aged two months up to five years, he should receive one litre of oxygen per minute through the nasopharyngeal catheter. Higher flow rates should not be used, 
as they may be dangerous to the child. These recommended flow rates should deliver 45 to 60 percent of oxygen in the airways. It's important to use a humidifier when using the nasopharyngeal catheter. If this is not done, the child's pharynx will become dry, sore and inflamed, with an increased risk of infection. The bubbling of the humidifier should be checked regularly, every time the child is checked, to make sure that the tubing has not kinked and the oxygen supply been interrupted. The humidifier may have a high pressure alarm whistle, which should sound if the tubing blocks. However, this may not be effective at very low flow rates, under one litre per minute. The water in the humidifier should be changed daily. The humidifier should be washed and dried at least once a week, or when you stop giving oxygen to a patient, to avoid bacterial contamination. Unscrew the jar from the humidifier and wash the humidifier and jar in a kitchen detergent or soapy water. Then soak them in a mild antiseptic before rinsing and drying in air. It's important to allow the humidifier to dry out completely.